All right, so we've been talking about elementary row operations in order to turn any, a system into its uh, equivalent triangular form because that's really easy to solve. So we're going to do the same exact things again, but we're going to do it in a matrix, specifically an augmented matrix. And for us, augmented matrix is going to mean that we're going to add a column, a column to our coefficient matrix. Okay, and uh, that's what's kind of happening in this picture here is that these construction workers are adding some columns to the structure here. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So an augmented matrix is going to add the column of constant terms from your system of equations to the coefficient matrix. So we know how to make a coefficient matrix. It's pretty easy. So I just take all the coefficients and I put it into a three by three matrix. Okay, now I can augment that. I can take off the bracket at the end and I can put in the constant terms, the 9, negative 4, and 10, and just make one complete matrix, just one matrix to represent that whole entire system of equations. And this becomes a 3 by 4 matrix. Again, it's called augmented because we have added in a column of constant terms. Okay? Now then, everything that we did everything that we did with the equations, the elementary row operations, being able to exchange two equations, multiplying any equation by um, a non-zero constant, and then doing that linear combination of adding a multiple of one equation to another equation to replace that equation, we can do that with these augmented matrices. The only difference is we didn't have to worry about the variables, which is nice, we just have to look at the numbers. And the other thing is Instead of calling it A, B, and C for the equations, we're going to call it R1, R2, and R3 for row 1, row 2, and row 3. Okay? So I think that you might like this a little bit better because it's going to be a little bit less to write down. Okay, so on, on exercise 4, we're going to rewrite this first of all in an augmented matrix and then perform those elementary row operations to turn it into an equivalent form in... Um, triangular form. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to take all of those coefficients, put it in the coefficient matrix, and then add to that a column of nine, negative four, ten. Now, whenever you do, if you, we're going to see that we're going to be able to do this in a calculator in a matter of seconds. But whenever you do, it will not have this vertical line in here. This vertical line is just to help us, like, visually separate all the co the coefficients from all of the the answers over there on the far right hand side. Okay, so let's get started on this one. So all of the steps that we did before are still true here. I want to first get rid of all of the X elements. So for us, that means I'm going to get rid of this one first and then this one next. So to get rid of this negative one, it's a negative one X, I can just add up equation the row one with row two to replace row two. Okay, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Row one stays the same, row three stays the same, but my new row two is going to come from adding up the top two rows. So one and negative one is zero, negative two plus three is one, two plus zero is one, and nine minus four is five. Okay? Now, I have to get rid of this 2 right here. In order to get rid of that 2, the only row that I could use to eliminate it is the top row. Okay, but the coefficient's a 1. I need it to be the exact opposite of the 2, so I need to multiply row 1 by negative 2 and add it to row 3 to replace row 3. Okay, so just for uh, just for a visual to help your eye out, I'm going to take and I'm going to multiply the whole top equation of the top row by negative two. But whenever I write down my new row one, I leave the original numbers, not the ones in red, but the ones in black. Okay, so the ones in red are just there so that I can easily add up those numbers. Okay, so row one stays the same, row two stays the same, but my new row three is. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Negative 18 plus 10 is negative 8. Okay. All right so far? 
So now the next thing that I have to do is I have to eliminate this negative one. It's the y in the last equation. The only equation that I could use to do that with is, e is row two. Because if I try to use row one, it puts an x back in the bottom equation, which is not what I want. Okay, so a very simple thing I can do is just add up row two with row three to replace row three, since those numbers are already opposite. The top stays the same, row two stays the same, but my new row three is zero plus zero is zero, one minus one is zero, two minus three is negative one, and then five minus eight is a negative three. Okay? And then finally, I need to get rid of the negative sign. I need to get rid of the negative sign in front of this negative one. And I can do that by just taking negative row three to replace row three. Okay, so top row will stay the same, middle row will stay the same, the last one will just change signs on both of them. And now I have just put this thing into triangular form. Okay, so I could solve it then by going here, z is equal to three. That's what I'm getting from that bottom row. From the next row, this means one y plus two times z, which is two times three from the bottom equation, is equal to five. That's six subtracted over y is equal to negative one. Okay, and then finally the top row is saying one x, so I just write an x, minus two times my negative one, uh, plus two times my three, which is my z-coordinate. Whoops, that should be a three, not a z, is equal to nine, okay? So this is x plus two plus six is equal to nine. Add those up, that's eight subtracted over, x is equal to one. So my final answer here is a one, a negative one, and a three.